Good morning. Our convent ceremony is based on the ancient traditions of the Knights Templars. The three white candles represent the Holy Trinity. The single red candle is the Grand Prior's candle. It is late when the Grand Prior is present. The chair at the altar is God's chair and signifies his presence. Knights and dames, please rise for the processional and formal opening of the convent by His Excellency Grand Prior 23, Chevalier Ralph Donald Robinson, JCTJ, GMTJ. Knights and dames, you will respond to our master as God by saying, we are all brothers and sisters. And to non nobis domini non nobis by saying, said nomini duo de gloria. Place your hand as the prior does. Our master is God. We are, we are all, all brothers, brothers and sisters. sisters. Non nobis dei non nobis. My brothers and sisters, take your places. Night protector, is this convent protected? It is so, your excellency. Please be seated. Knight sword bearer, present the sword to each knight and dame. You, my brothers and sisters, touch the guard of the sword whose hilt is the symbol of the cross and also the symbol of chivalry with the three central digits of your right hand.
In the name and with the help of God, I declare this convent open in accordance with the ancient usages. Knight Chancellor, please open the Bible to Psalms 115. Our chaplain shall now offer the opening prayer, followed by reading Psalms 115, verses 1 through 11, from which our motto is taken. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, Jesus Christ, we are gathered here today to uphold the traditions of the order and of chivalry, and to honor and glorify you and your son, and also to to pledge our support to the Holy Land, the land of, of the apple of your eye. And uh, we just ask that you are uh, present with us today and that you glorify and honor us into your service as we continue. We ask this in your son's precious name, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Psalm 115 verses one through 11. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Why should the heathen say, so where is their God? But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. Noses they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not handle. Feet they have, but they do not walk. Nor do they speak through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So everyone who trusts in them, O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is our help and shield. Amen. Amen. Knight Chancellor, I request you communicate the order of the day. Your Excellencies, there will be an installation and investiture of three new apostles. And my wife reminds me that there's more. <laughs> I would. There will be the presentation of awards, there will be promotions, and there will be the investiture of a new prior and a new priory officers. Knight Chancellor, I request that you present the candidates. What do you say? And Herman. Your Excellency and Grand Prior, I present three postulants to you and to our brothers and sisters here assembled for approval and investiture. Will Your Excellency receive them into the order and accept them as members? I shall do so gladly if all assembled here agree. Brother Knight, Sister Dames, will you accept these postulants as peers and companions? Please respond by saying, Gladly will we do so with the help of God. Gladly will we do so with the help of God. Brothers, having been nominated and seconded by knights and dames of the order based upon your deportment, speech, and charitable devotion, and having submitted all necessary documents and receiving endorsement of the Grand Council of the Autonomous Grand Priory of the United States of America, are you prepared to be initiated into our ranks of chivalry and disorder? We are. Candidates, please be seated. You will now hear the history of knighthood, 
the early history of the order and the charter of this priory. I task you to listen well. The ceremony of knighthood, of which the installation and investiture of postulants of the order, is a commemorative illusion developed with the grandeur of military orders of the state. Thomas Castain in the Three Edwards describes that development by the time of Edward III. Conferring knighthood had become, had developed into a complicated and rather beautiful ceremony since the beginning. With the accolade, a tap on the shoulder with a sword had sufficed. It began the previous evening when the candidate was shaved and then taken to a special chamber where a bath was prepared with scented water and a covering of linen and rich cloths. While he bathed, two old knights talked to him solemnly about the duties of the order. Later still, he was led to the chapel where he stood throughout the night, keeping watch over his armor and saying prayers and meditating. At break of day, he bathed again, confessed, heard mass, and offered a taper with a piece of money stuck in a white tallow. With his future squire riding before him and carrying the sword and gold spurs, which were to be attached to his heels, he made his way to the great hall. Here he knelt on one knee and was given the accolade. The most important part of the ceremony, Angelongus to homage with the vow to relieve and protect widows, the fatherless, the oppressed, and miserable, to defend the church of God, and to promulgate and defend the Christian faith, and to repel the violence and cruelties of the programs of the pagans and war. In a religious order, the vow included a vow of poverty, chastity, and obedience. For the part-time members, the confraternites, who gave money and spent a few months of the year of the order, the vow was amended to conjugal chastity. The badge of the order served as a pledge of remembrance of the uh, sincerity of those who love for faith and the knight and his oath. The secretary will now read the early history of the order. About the year 1118, two knights, Hugh of Payans and Geoffrey of St. Omer, who had come as pilgrims to the Holy Land, formed a community of knights who made religious vows of chastity, obedience, and poverty to the Patriarch of Jerusalem. A new religious order had its beginning, uniting the monk and the warrior. According to the chronicler, William of Terre, the promise was made that they would protect the roads and the routes to the utmost of their ability against the ambushes of thieves and attackers, especially in the regard to the safety of pilgrims. Impressed with their zeal, the king of Jerusalem, Baldwin II, offered them quarters in part of his palace, located in al Ask Mosque. This began the Templar Association with Temple Mount, which was believed to have been the location of Solomon's Temple. In making their vows, these knights, traditionally numbered at nine, accepted the rule of St. Augustine, of the canons of the Temple of Christ, the Muslim shrine of the Dome of the Rock. Thus they were first known as the Poor Knights of Christ of the Temple of Solomon, later to be called the Knights Templar. Over the next seven years, these first Templars increased in number, providing escorts for pilgrims and travelers coming from Jaffa to Jerusalem and from Jerusalem to the Jordan River, the location of Christ's baptism. Even though they received support from the king, the patriarch, and noble pilgrims, the tradition of their poverty developed, symbolized by two knights on one horse. By embracing lady poverty 
as St. Francis of Assisi would in the future, they saw themselves as imitators of the simplicity and poverty of Christ and his disciples. Gradually, these Templars were recognized as offering an answer to the lack of a reliable and permanent military force in the Holy Land. On acquiring the support of the influential abbot of Clairvaux, St. Bernard, the order was recognized at the Council of Troyes in 1128. A rule was adopted based on the Benedictine Cistercian model. Pope Onarius II approved the council's action. Ogapan was chosen as the first master. Seven years later, St. Bernard wrote, in praise of the new knighthood, or de laure no ve malitiae, in which he described the Templars as a new type of order in the holy places, uniting the knightly and monastic life. The white mantle of the Cistercians was adopted as a symbolic of the purity of their lives. Later, the red cross of the Crusaders was added to their tunics and mantles showing willingness to shed their blood in defense of Christianity. For the next 160 years, the Knights Templar provided a standing army that would lose thousands of its members sacrificing their lives to preserve the Christian presence in the Holy Land. Dame Patricia Sokol, please read the Charter of the Priory. The Priory of the Temple Church was created by the Autonomous Grand Priory of the United States of America, which in turn was authorized by the Autonomous Grand Priory of Switzerland, and is recognized by the Grand Magistry of the Order for the following purposes. To continue the tradition of the Orders of the Crusades, in particular that of the Poor Knights of the Temple, that were formally recognized by the Pope of the Council of Troyes in 1128 A.D to combat in a new crusade modern paganism and oppose the symptoms of decadence in our age, to defend in an ecumenical spirit the common faith of all who believe in one God, and to effect a union of Christianity to fight intolerance and to help in the reassertion of the spirit of chivalry, to preserve and perpetuate the traditions and customs of one of the oldest international military organizations of the world, which was founded in the holy city of Jerusalem between 1119 and 1128 AD, to protect and teach the Christian religion, to aid the needy, lame, blind, and afflicted. Do the candidates know the oath they take? They do, Your Excellency. Our oath of office and membership are one and the same, as we all share responsibility for the conduct and the honor of the order. As these candidates take their vow of loyalty and oath, let all knights and dames present join with them and thus renew your own. Knight Chief of Protocol, please administer the oath. All knights and dames, please stand for the oath. Brother Knights, Sister Dames, and candidates, please raise your right hand. I will now say the oath in phrases and pause after each phrase. You are to repeat the phrase using your name where I use mine. I, Howard Hiraldo, pledge to be a faithful Christian Templar. I, Patricia Sokol, pledge to be a faithful Christian Templar. I promise to live a chivalrous life. I promise to live a chivalrous life. To grow in generous Christian charity. To grow in generous Christian charity. To assist Christians at risk in the Holy Land and throughout the world. To assist Christians at risk in the Holy Land and throughout the world. To respect my fellow knights and dames. To respect my fellow knights and dames. And to honor the lawful requests of the sovereign military order of the Temple of Jerusalem. And to honor the lawful requests of the sovereign military order of the Temple of Jerusalem. Of 
Uh, the Autonomous Grand Priory of the United States of America. Of the Autonomous Grand Priory of the United States of America. And the priory to which I belong. And the priory to which I belong. So help me God. So help me God. Please be seated. Earlier I read from Psalm 115, and the, the motto of our organization is, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. And that's verse 1 from Psalm 115. Today we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, briefly. So when it comes to worship, worship is a powerful and transformative experience and there is an inexorable truth about it in the Bible, and it says we become like that which we worship. Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines idolatry as the worship of a physical object as a god or immoderate attachment or devotion to something. And Psalm 115 talked about that. It talked about the idols that they carved. They could not see, they could not hear, they could not speak, they could not touch, they could not eat but yet people made these idols and worshiped them. And there is only one person who can wake up every morning and worship himself without it being idolatry, and that is God. If we worship something other than God, we will become like it. And we will, when we worship Christ, we will become more like Christ. This morning, we'll very quickly look behind a few of these verses. True worship, in verse 1, we find magnifies the glory of God. True worshipers seek to elevate and exalt the beauty, the wonder, and the magnificence of God, not ourselves, because worship is not about us. In the next verses, true worship expresses trust in God. In verses 4 through 8, the psalmist shows the insanity of worshiping idols made by human hands. It says their idols are of silver and gold, the works of human hands. They have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see, ears but do not hear, noses but do not smell. They have hands that do not feel, and they do not walk, although they have feet. But they do not make a sound in their throat either. Those who become like them or make them become like them. Thus we become like what we worship. Isaiah 44 states, all who fashion idols are nothing and that they delight in, or they do not delight in or profit in what they make. The chapter also explains that the craftsmen take a piece of wood and form part of it or carve part of it into an idol and then take the rest of it and create a fire to cook their food. True worship in verses 1 through 3 and 9 through 13 tells us that worship is brought by the people, or it brings the people of God together. The pronouns us, their, they, our, and we are constantly used through the psalm, emphasizing that worship at its highest level is done together and never in isolation. True worship in verses 12 through 15 says that we receive the blessings of God when we worship him. Verses 12 through 15 remind us that the Lord remembers us. He will bless us, and he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. And that's the holy land that our order supports, is the houses of, of God, basically. Um, in conclusion... There is a non-negotiable reality. We become like what we worship. We were made to worship the Father and the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit, and we were made to do this together. When we magnify the glory of God, trust in the Lord, and worship together, we receive the promises uh, or the blessings promised by Christ. We will now prepare to induct our new members. The prior of the Temple Church will prepare the apostles for investiture 
by explaining the meaning of the accoutrements of the knife for it. So, a sword there, please come forward. Brother Poshillens, you have taken the oath and in a few moments you will become a knight. As you are dubbed, you will be touched with the sword, your heels will be tapped with the spurs, and you will be vested with the cross and mantle. The meaning of these actions are thusly explained. <coughs> the knight's sword is a symbol of justice. <coughs> Remember that you must fight from this day forward against all things of an evil or malicious manner. You will soon be a defender of the kingdom of Christ and must repulse all his enemies. You must cut away and destroy corruption as you must adorn and amplify all things of sound and noble nature. By doing so, you will be fostering the kingdom of Christ and molding yourselves in the image of our blessed Savior, so whom all glory and ador adoration be given unto ages and ages forever. You will then... <coughs> You will then be touched on the heels with the spurs of the priory. Receive this emblem of knighthood so that you may be ever ready to ride forth in defense of justice, righteousness, and truth. Just as the spurs are used to urge the horse to greater speed and energy, so, you also, so also you must spur yourself to heroic efforts on behalf of the kingdom of God by your actions, showing the world how little you covet it, possessions and how little you esteem gold. Next, you will be given the cross of our order, that you must wear this cross to the greater glory of God <coughs> as a symbol of the sovereign <coughs> military order, that thereby you may be a to, uh, admonished to remain ever faithful to its high ideals. This is the sign of the true cross, signifying the fruit of the Holy Spirit, to which by grace of God you will be abundantly endued. Finally, you will receive your mantle of white and chrism. The livery of the sovereign military order in remembrance of the white robe that clothed you at your baptism. In augmentation of this, the honor this day bestowed upon you, and in token that the robe of divine protection will ever encompass one who is faithful and true. May you be your life's, may you be unto your life's end, a bold servant and soldier of Christ, to whom his glory and adoration be given unto ages and ages forever and ever. <coughs> Amen. All right. Please present the devices to be bestowed by the chaplain. Okay. Grand Prior 23, His Excellency, Chevalier Ralph Donald Robinson, GCTJ, GMTJ will now perform the accolade. Oh. Night Chaplain, would you please come stand to my right? Prior off, stand to my left. Sword bearer and armor. Please position yourself to hand out. <laughs> Master of Postulants, please present the candidate.
Excellency, I present candidate Captain Aaron Gordon Bresnahan in attendance with his primary sponsor, Chevrolet Captain Howard Geraldo, KCTJ. In nomine de Patri et Fili et Spiritu Sancti. Except the spurs of our order. Arise, a knight, and accept the cross of our order. Accept the mantle of our order. And accept God's blessing. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Accept God's blessing. Excellency, I present postulant the Reverend Father Daniel Robert Moore. In attendance is his primary sponsor, Lieutenant Ch uh, Commander Chevalrice, I'm sorry, Captain Chevalrice Christine O'Donnell, GOTJ. In nomine Dei, Patri, et Fili, et Spiritu Sancti. Accept the spurs of our order. Arise, a knight, and accept the cross of our order. Accept the mantle of our order. And accept God's blessing. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear nor be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Receive God's blessings. Amen. Excellency, I present postulant Major David James Stuckenberg, Sr., Ph.D. In attendance is his primary sponsor, Chevalrice Claudia Chamberlain, GOTJ. In nomine de Patri et Fili et Spiritu Sancti. Accept the spurs of our order. Arise, a knight. Accept the cross of our order. Accept the mantle of our order.
and accept God's blessing. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear nor be discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you always. Receive God's blessing. <coughs> Almighty and eternal God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we, the Priory of the Temple Church, of the Sovereign Military Order, of the Temple of Jerusalem, and by the authority vested in me by the Grand Council of the Autonomous Grand Priory of the United States and the Grand Magistracy of the Order, accept you as knights in our order. Ladies and gentlemen, please give our newest knights a warm round of applause. Chancellor, what is the next order of business? The next order of business is the presentation of awards. I call upon the Knight Chancellor to read the names of the worthy knights and dames to receive recognition for their sacrificial and selfless service to the Grand Priory of the United States during the Grand Convent and the Vestiture hosted by the Priory of the Temple Church in Orlando 31st of August to the 2nd of September this past year of 2023. The individual award narratives will be posted separately in an email to each of you later on. Your Excellency, I call forward the following night to receive the Achievement Medal, Chevalier Javier de Garcia, RN, KCTJ. By the authority vested in me as Grand Prior of the Autonomous Grand Prior of the United States, and in recognition of your personal achievement and service to the Order, I present you our Order's Achievement Medal. And it's my pleasure to do so, sir. So. Thank you, sir. Turn around and face out. Proudly present the U.S. recipient for our Order's Achievement Medal. Thank you. Excellency, I call forward the following knights and dame to receive the Commendation Medal. Lieutenant Colonel Chevalier Robert S. Miller, GCTJ. Chevalier Patricia T. Sokol, DPA, DTJ. And Reverend Chevalier David F. Sokol, PhD, KTJ. <laughs> By the authority vested in me as Grand Prior of the Autonomous Grand Prior of the United States, and in recognition of your personal achievement and service to the Order, I present you the Order's Commendation Medal. Thank you, sir, for your service to the order. And thank you, then, for your service to the order. Y'all will turn and face out. Please give a warm round of applause <laughs> to the recipients. Excellency, I call forward the following knights and dames to receive the Commendation Medal. 
Excellency, I call forward the following knights and dames to receive the Meritorious Service Medal. Reverend Chevalier Thomas C. Beaton, MDiv, MBA, KCTJ. Captain Chevalier Howard Peraldo, KCTJ. Chevalries Margaret C. Miller, GOTJ, CMTJ. Chevalries Claudia S. Chamberlain, GOTJ. And Chevalier Dennis Chamberlain, PhD, GOTJ. By the authority vested in me by the Grand Council of the Order. For your, for your service to the Order, it is really a pleasure to award meritorious service awards. So I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart for your service to the Order. Thank you. Those are ours. Yeah. Us too. Get stars. Star. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's it. Oh, no. That's a tie. That's a tie. Please turn and face the audience. A round of applause. <laughs> Finally, Your Excellencies, I call forward the following dame to receive the Legion of Merit, Chevalries, Linda M. Ross, MBA, GOTJ. This is not a frequently given award. One has got to have performed an extraordinary level of service <clears throat> to the order to get this one. I have chaired a grand CNI. It is a challenge. It was a challenge that was met incredibly well last September by Prior Ross. Under those of you who were there, a few times some somewhat trying circumstances, <laughs> like me trying to avoid a hurricane getting down here. <laughs> so it is by the authority vested in me as the Grand Prior, and for your service to this order, it is a real deep pleasure to present you with the Legion of Merit. Thank you. Thank you, dear. promotion of worthy knights and dames to the next highest rank. I call upon the Chancellor to read the names of those who are to be so honored. Thank you and congratulations, well deserved. I call the following knights and dames to come forward to be promoted to the rank of commandeur. Their individual promotion narratives are posted se uh, separately for your reference. Chevalier James Ronald Pottinger, KTJ. Cheval Reese. Sarah Louise Pottinger, DTJ. Chevrolet, Reverend David F. Sokol, PhD. And Chevrolet Reese, Patricia T. Sokol, DPA, DTJ. Oops. I got it. Thank you. I'm so sorry. It's always a pleasure promote people in the order because you've, you've been active, you're accomplishing something for the order. So it's a real pleasure always to promote someone. So. David. Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you very much. 
By the authority vested in me, the Grand Priory of the United States, it's my pleasure to promote each of you to the rank of Knight or Dame Commandeur of the Order. Please turn around. A round of applause for our new Knight and Dame Commandeur. order of business, Chancellor. Your Excellency, the next order of business will be the change of command for the prior of the Priory of the Temple Church in the installation of new Priory officers. Dean Red Star, please read the slate of our newly elected or appointed officers. It gives me pleasure to read these names. Prior Dennis Chamberlain, Ph.D., G.O.T.J. Chancellor, Thomas Beaton, M.Div., M.B.A., K.C.T.J. Inspector, David Sokol, Ph.D., K.C.T.J. Secretary, Kim St. Clair Seals, A.P.R.N., B.C., D.C.T.J. Treasurer, Claudia Chamberlain, GOTJ. Appointed XCOM members are the Chief of Protocol, Robert Sherman, KTJ. Registrar, myself, Margaret Miller, GOTJ, CMTJ. Priory Officers, Armorer, Henry G. Hahn, Jr., KCTJ. Omanier, Anthony, Tony Cotigno, KTJ. Avocat, John Earl, KCTJ. Chaplain, Reverend David Sokol, Ph.D., KCTJ. Knight Protector, James Ronald Pottinger, KCTJ. Master of Postulants, Claudia and Dennis Chamberlain, GOTJs. Sword Bearer, Dr. Jack Gurkovich, KTJ. Your Excellency, Grand Prior, please administer the oath of office to our newly elected or appointed officers. I would ask Prior Linda Ross, Prior Elect Dennis Chamberlain, to please come forward and stand before me. I ask all other newly elected or appointed officers to please rise and remain in place. Thank you. The oath of office for the prior and all priory officers is the same. While I have the new prior before me, I ask the prior elect and all priory officers to take their oath of office together. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that you will carry out the duties of the office to which you have been elected or appointed to obey the statutes and regulations of the Grand Priory of the United States and the Priory of the Temple Church, and that in so doing, you will not knowingly contravene the provisions of the Constitution of the United States of America, nor the laws of the several states. So help you God, your response is, I will so help me God. I will so help me God. I now pronounce you duly installed. Will all present please join me in congratulating the new elected officers of the Priory of the Temple Church. <laughs> officers, please be seated. Oh, hang on. I'm sorry. 
Thank you. Prior Ross will now pass the standing priority flag to the Grand Prior. Thank you. And then I will pass it to the new Prior. Thank you. That's good. Congratulations on a job. Well, well done. <laughs> Yes. Congratulations and good luck. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Officers, past prior Linda Ross will now pass the standing priory flag. Okay, to the grand prior, everything is done. And then we'll pass the priory flag to the incoming. In keeping with tradition, sitting and former grand priors and priors may also wear neck fasteners made of gold chain on their mantle and the red prior's tassel affixed to the peak of the hood before taking her place with other past priors known as the Council of Elders, past prior Ross will bestow prior Chamberlain with a red prior's tassel. She's already done that. Oh, thank you. Well then, my job's done. Haven't been prior for five minutes and already there's a technical difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> and the grand prior looked at me and said, get used to it. So. <laughs> All right, so let's continue. The, the original monastic rule of the order was drawn up by St. Bernard de Clavaux and was a modification of the monastic rule of the St. Benedict. Most people in the medieval era, including the warrior monks of the order, were illiterate. So one of the purposes of the annual convent was to provide a forum where the grand prior and local priors could reinforce their members' oath and the key tenets of the order. Our modern rule is a modification of that's with the confer knight follow, and was done then. It is read now at least annually to the knights and dames in convent at each investiture of the new knights and dames. The inspector will begin the reading of the rule. Remember, by the gracious gift of God, we are Templars, descendants of the poor knights of the temple whose first home was found in the confines of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. It was their custom to pray and to meditate on the word of God and the meaning of their work. Therefore, we must never forget to meditate and pray every day. The Chief of Protocol will continue the reading. Charity, recognize with joy that we are not strangers to God, but his very own creatures. Within our order, we will meet brothers and sisters of all nationalities, all traditions. We should strive to comfort ourselves to those who practice Christian faith and true chivalry. The secretary will continue the reading.
Discipline. The principles of life set out in our earliest rule are still valid in our own day. These are the proper care of the body, the soul and spirit, and honest work, recognizing that activity by itself is not virtue. Material success can weaken us greatly. The goal of this life is not material enrichment or of unlimited pleasure and amusement, but of growth in knowledge and in the service of God and our fellows. We should establish a fixed time every day for meditation and prayer. Let us pray earnestly in our hearts and publicly in sharing the prayer of life of our own traditions, always making intercessions for all our brothers and, and sisters. We should read, listen, and consult sound guides to further our spiritual education that we may lay up for ourselves treasure in heaven. The Chancellor will continue the reading. The white cape, ordained with the red cross of the order, symbolizes purity and reminds us that we are able to make sacrifices just as our Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed for us. The customs of the modern life do not excuse us for abandoning the struggle against self-temptation, the self-indulgent and lustful spirit, and the excessive pursuit of money or power. The struggle against intolerance, hypocrisy, false teachings, and ignorance is the role that, by God's grace, has fallen to us. That same grace prompts us to serve others in whatever need because Christ loves them and we serve him in them. The day will come when we will render our accounts before the throne of judgment. The treasurer will now conclude the reading. Each day we must assist our brothers and sisters who support the same objectives and work to fulfill them. <clears throat> It is necessary that we should be responsible for such service to prepare for the day when Christ will say, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. In order that we may live a truly chivalrous life, we must follow the quest the Lord has set before us. If we work without expectation of reward, we shall be an example to all. So shall we become living stones built up into the temple of which Christ is the capstone. This concludes the reading of our modern rule. Knight Chancellor, I request that you state the next order of business. Prior, the next order of business is the report of deaths. Does the chaplain have a report to make? There is no report to be made. We are honored today to have Grand Prior 23, His Excellency Chevrolet Ralph Don Robinson, GCTJ, GMTJ, as our officiant. Is there a message, sir, from you, Grand Prior, or from the Grand Magistrate? There is. First of all, I bring greetings from the Grand Master of the International Order, David Appleby, and to the Grand Commander of OSMTH, uh, George McLean. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be here with you today. I will have some additional remarks, and I'll save those for after that. Thank you. <laughs> are there any official guests? There are no other guests, Excellency. Knight Chancellor, what's the next item on the agenda? Mm. Excellency, there are no further items on the agenda. I will now ask whether there is any other new business by repeating the customary ancient phrase. If any knight or dame present wishes to speak a word, it will be accorded to him or her. Yes, Your Excellency. 
I would like to thank every one of you in this priory for the past two years. It has been a pleasure being your prior, and I look forward to the many, many years of people going through the ranks and making this prior greater than it is, priory greater than it is. Thank you. If any knight or dame present wishes to speak a word, it will be accorded to him or her. If any knight or dame present wishes to speak a word, it will be accorded to him or her. I now turn this over to the almanier. This collection is taken from members of the order only. Before departing, I request you, knights and dames, my brothers and sisters, to pay your mic. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, while thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and of in unity and godly love. Amen. Amen. Knights and dames, raise your right hand upon your heart, and let us meditate now before our Lord God. Think of what will be when we are no more, and never forget that each of us must die. Knight sword bearers, present to each knight and dame the sword, and you, my brothers and sisters, touch the guard of the sword with the central three digits of the right hand as a sign of your oath of fidelity to the order.
The chaplain will now offer the closing prayer. Let us pray. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. The Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us peace, both now and evermore. This we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Knights and dames, this convent is closed. Receive the chaplain's blessing before awaiting the marshal's directions for the recessional. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And all God's people say, thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. To God.